Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. Once again, I forgot to turn my microphone up. Ugh, my levels are all over the place. Yay! Joining me today, we have Amy. Hey all. Merry Christmas. We have Stuart. Hello. We have Eugene. Merry Christmas from the United States. And we have maybe one or two other people who may or may not randomly jump in later. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. Michael, knowing him, is doing chores. Because he is Michael. <laughs> anyway, this week on the podcast, we are talking Supergirl finale, which we sort of touched on last week, but we didn't realise was another episode to come. I blame Stuart <laughs> for that. Yeah, I, I messed up. Yeah. So, there's that. Also, we are covering the story that broke the other day that... Where's his name? There it is. Stephen Amal, the guy who plays the Arrow in the show Arrow, is willing to do a Marvel movie character. And we've got ourselves a um, handy-dandy Marvel book. And we're going to have a look through it and see if we can find a superhero which would work well for him that isn't Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's taken. Yeah. But seriously, being Arrow and Hawkeye at the same time would be hilarious. So, we've also got a bonus topic that we can't actually remember if we touched on before. But that is, is the scimitar of Dominion design? Now, we may or may not get to it, and if we don't get to it, we'll just do what we do all the time, which is bump it to next week and then forget about it for another six months. <laughs> This was on the books to talk about in episode 30. It's now episode 62. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a while. Anyway, let's kick things off with... Actually, yeah, let's kick things off with um, which character he would best be in Marvel. Why not? I've got the book. Let's have a look. So this book has got like a zillion random superheroes in it. So I'm just going to flick pages until I find one that sort of looks like him. That seems to be how they get people for <laughs> Marvel movies nowadays. <sighs> it's, it would be interesting to... See, I'd like to see him cast as a, as a villain just to see if he could do both. Yeah. Or, or... Well, I wouldn't mind seeing him cast as like an, an alien-y type I'd role. Like... As opposed to like a human role. Like he, could be, like, he could easily be Captain Marvel. No, no I'd love to see him cast as t um, Taskmaster. Taskmaster? Let me just flip through my... Taskmaster, I um, actually know a bit about Taskmaster. Um, he's a, he can cop any fighting star, copy any fighting star. Yeah, except I for could, Deadpool's. I, I could see... Yeah, it's because Deadpool's a drunken lunatic. <laughs> um, yeah, I could see him playing Taskmaster, because Taskmaster's got the whole creepy-ass psycho skull thing. He's got a tiny little... Sh Metal alloy shield that doubles as a throwing weapon, so he's sort of got a whole Captain America thing going. But the way in the picture I'm looking at in my book, which is for reference, Marvel's Earth's Mightiest Heroes, The Avengers Ultimate Character Guide. Page 175 is the Taskmaster. Jeez. So, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mouthful of a name, but it's a really kick-ass picture. Yeah, I could definitely see him playing Taskmaster. Um, the the other one I could see, and I don't know if they would do it, but I could also see him as Iron Fist. Yeah, um, Iron Fist would be a good choice. I was looking at Iron Fist earlier. Like he looks like he looks like Iron Fist. Yeah. You just give him the long hair and boom. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm I, wanted, I, I mainly want to see him play a villain just because I want to see if he can do both balls or if he's if he's the. There's some actors. That have this, two shoes. There's really? some actors that have this unique skill of either being able to do um, good guys really well or bad guys really well, and then there's a very niche few that can do both really well. Like David Tennant. Well, 
yeah. if you've if you've watched all of Arrow, I mean, his character has been both dark and light. Yeah. So, so uh, I, 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 th- see, I, I, I think he could pull off a villain or a good guy without too much problems. Unless you've got a really dark villain. Then that that would be an interesting to see if he could do it. But I, I, I think, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Marvel have an equivalent to the Jericho. What the hell did I just find? I don't know. What did Demolition you find? Man? Oh, Demolition Man. <laughs> what the hell powers? Demolition Man possesses superhuman strength and endurance. He's also a trained wrestler. Wow. <laughs> Have fun with that. Well, he did try to be a wrestler. <laughs> hey, he did pretty well. I watched that match. And he did sort of wear the arrow outfit out to the ring as well. <laughs> yeah, he did. But no, I, I wanted. I, I, I'd love to see a live action Taskmaster just because Taskmaster is my favorite. Marvel villain, so... Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I think we've... I, I can't find anyone else in the book that looks interesting that he could play. But yeah, it would... Actually, to be honest, I'd rather see him and Flash face off against... Um... No, better yet. Let, let's go with the age-old battle. We'll go with the Legends of Tomorrow, which is coming out in about a month from now. So you've got the two Hawks... Um, Flash, Arrow, Speedy, Black Canary, White Canary, and Atom versus Avengers 2.0. So Captain America, Vision, Scarlet Witch, um, Black Widow, Hawkeye, um, Ant-Man. I know I was forgetting one. As much as, I, as much as I'm DC, I'm already leaning towards Avengers 2.0. Yeah. Well, Ant-Man versus... Um, Adam would be interesting. Adam would be interesting, because Adam could fly an Ant-Man car without the assistance of other ants. And I think Atom can actually go smaller than Ant-Man controllably. Well, he can go into Atoms. So... Without nearly but then Ant-Man them. also... Um, Avengers, for those who don't know, Ant-Man can also eventually grow gigantic. Yeah, which I suspect he will do in the new movie. Um, Can't Adam as well? Yeah, they can. But not, both... not to his size. Like yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking way big size from yeah. Ben Ten. Can't believe I just made a Ben Ten reference. <laughs> I can't believe you made a Ben Ten reference either. So yeah. Um, Iron Man, who out of those, I think Iron Man would just sort of sit there and watch and just like... <laughs> I mean, she's like, uh, I mean, she's like, meh. Iron Man and War Machine would just be like, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, it would it'd be a good fight. Hawkeye versus Green Arrow would be hilarious. Yeah, but we already know that Hawkeye wins. Yeah. They did they did a death battle on that, and, the, the, and they actually made points as to why he wins. Yeah, I know. So I wonder what would happen over... if you did Hawkeye against Batman. Bad day to be Hawkeye. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll imagine Batman versus Iron Man. Well, yeah, that would be an interesting. The battle thing. of the billionaires. Yeah. I, 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 battle of the I've actually seen boys. a picture of this. Batman is literally throwing money at Iron Man. Iron Man is throwing money at Batman. <laughs> Spider Man's in between the two, picking it all up. No, no, no. That's Deadpool. <laughs> That'd be Deadpool. <laughs> That'd be Deadpool. No, no. In, in, in the picture I saw, it was Spider Man just sort of picking it all up. <laughs> it's like, wow. Well, it's not well like... Spider Man doesn't come from money, so. Exactly. So, he has anyway. no money, which is why he's. I guess he's gonna pay his way through high school somehow. Exactly. Let's move on to Supergirl since we've like exhausted what that up? topic and then. Then dug it a hole and buried it, and then <laughs> crapped on it, and then dug that a hole and buried that. <laughs> so, Supergirl finale. What do you guys think? Um, to be honest, little disappointed. Little disappointed. 
Just, just, I guess the episode beforehand was such a big episode in, in the in the DC universe with having a Martian Manhunter. Yeah, it, I, I definitely felt surprised when they. I think if they reversed out. the episodes and then had the Martian Manhunter as the mid-season finale as that cliffhanger, that would have been perfect. Oh yeah, which is why we sort of sort of left it as the mid-season finale. Yeah. But I am. I, I love. I love the the army of crypto. Um, the Kryptonians. That's really cool. Yeah. That's I love that they're starting. That they're starting to. Sh that they're showing their strength now. Yeah. So the, the only question and the only issue I have with Supergirl is when a large army of Kryptonians turn up, you sort of expect Superman up to turn up and just start cracking heads. <laughs> like. For him to go, yeah, you know what? I've got my human enemies, and it's not Man of Steel, and a couple of other sort of non-issue sort of bad guys that might be a little bit of a problem. So Supergirl, have fun dealing with your god-level equivalent bad guys over there. You're on your own. Yeah, it's sort of. I know. I know it's Supergirl, but I agree. That sort of situation, they should team up. Yeah, exactly. What I have loved about Supergirl so far is mm. that I love that they're using um, aspects from the from the New Fifty Two comics in it. Okay. Um, the, um, the battle um, with uh, Red Ar uh, Red Tornado, Red Arrow. Jeez, I've been watching way too much Young Justice. With uh, Red Tornado. And uh, wait, in that the uh, the solar flare where she becomes human for a day is actually straight out of the New Fifty Two comics. Yeah, like, yeah, but the, the, I must admit the reveal at the end of Supergirl when the boss sort of puts one and one together and works it out that was still pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It took a fucking long enough. <laughs> and, and that moment where it sort of washes over her face when she realizes you, it, that that look of oh god, I am so fucking stupid. <laughs> How did I not see this? Because she's stupid and she's a nurse. narcotic narcissist. Yeah. Yes, we know that. Yes. Yeah. She's an absolute loony. Um, so yeah. I know, so I was hoping EJ would be on so we could talk Star Trek. <laughs> well, maybe he's getting ready for Christmas as well. No. Boring. I blame EJ for not being here. It's always more fun when EJ's here. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll that, that's, yeah. Stuart's, that's Stuart's nervous laugh because he knows that he's being replaced by EJ. Yeah. <laughs> I Justifiably so. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what EJ actually thought of, of Star Wars. Yeah, well, I was. If those two guys were on, because EJ and Michael were going to be on, and they just. I was thinking, where the hell is Michael? I don't know. I'll see if I. See if I can add EJ to the call just for shits and giggles. <laughs> EJ, I am coming for you. Oh, well, he's online. He's online and whatnot, so. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot to set that to do not disturb so we, I don't get random pings. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I don't know, as I said with Supergirl, I, just, I think that the, 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 um, the big reveal before the mid season finale just kind of ruined it a bit. Yeah, because it was such a because it was such a big big episode. Oh yeah, like I can understand why they did it because they had the fight with the Kryptonians the next week, and they yeah. needed him to sort of be able to go full Manhunter on them, without it sort of being a big sort of thing. Well, so without trying to pull in Superman. Yeah. So the question remains: the per obviously the person that knows about his other identity is Superman because he says only one other person knows this secret and that would be Superman the question remains is there a Justice League in this universe now that would be an interesting and concept if, if so where is it when would we stumble across this thing um hmm see my, my bigger question was now that we have a Martian Manhunter are we, are we going to have a Miss Martian come into it once again <laughs> Watching way too much Young Justice. Yeah. I can't talk. Shock, horror, gasp. <laughs> Turns out it's actually her boss. What the Manhunter? Cat, cat is is is, is uh, yeah. again. Yeah. 
Secret... Too, o too old. No. He's fine. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. And remember, they can, they're can shapeshifters. They can assume yeah, anyone's true, identity. True. And, and she is female, but that's besides the point. Yeah. Have you guys seen uh, Vixen by any chance? Yo, oh, Vixen's awesome. So, she's going to be in the live action. I was going to bring that up in the news. Yeah. I, I watched the, I think it's like a 30 minute cartoon they released online to sort of introduce the character. It was pretty cool watching her just wreck Barry and um, <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> Barry seems to get wrecked a lot. Yeah, that's Barry for you. But he needs to learn more than just speed. It's the Flash. His literal ability is speed, and that's it. Yeah, but... <laughs> you think he'd learn how to fight to go with the speed? Yeah, well, he has been doing sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat training, but that doesn't mean he's very good at it. So, I'm... I'm yeah... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely wondering where they're going to go with Arrow and Flash after this season. Because, to be perfectly honest, Arrow has already been ramped, and then ramped, and then ramped, and then ramped, and it's reached the point where it, it's got to stop. It, it, as much as I love it, it's got to stop. It really does. I would have liked it to stop at the end of last season. It was a logical sort of ending point for that story. Um, but I'm sort of glad it came back because it brought back Constantine and a few of those others. So. Oh yeah, like like, and it's like that was cool. Well, Flash still has a lot of stuff to bring in. So. Oh yeah, I know, but the yeah, I don't know. I don't. Flash won't die down anytime soon, especially because I've just introduced Wally West. So yeah, eventually Wally will turn into Kid Flash. But there's like, there's so much. Uh... There's only so much you can do by yourself for Arrow. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm sort of curious is if they're going to transition away from Arrow and into Legends of Tomorrow. I know Legends of Tomorrow is meant to be a one-off thing, but if they did, if they transition into Legends of Tomorrow... What do you mean by tomorrow, a one-off thing? It was only meant to be... It's one season. Oh, yeah. It's only meant to be a sort of one season... It's only one season sort of story. If they transitioned off Arrow and onto Legends of Tomorrow as the mainstream run for Arrow... Um, then I'd be happy with that. But God only, God only knows the budget for those that TV show at this point. All the different bloody superpowers and stuff that they've got to do. Like every scene of Barry running. Can you imagine how long it would take to add the lightning to that? It depends if they don't just reuse the running they've done elsewhere. Oh, they, they would. They... they clearly would, especially with the close-up shots. But they would, but at the same time, there's a lot of shots that they can't that are story-specific. Like fight scenes? Yeah. It's like in Stargate. Stargate reuses a lot of the same visual effects shots from episode to episode, but there's still quite a few new shots that need to be done specifically for that episode. So, yeah. Anyway. Actually, you know what? Eugene, I'm going to let you do your model talk really a bit early, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, this week I'm going to cover two different groups of models. Um, the first group is from Bandai of Japan. Anyone who likes the Gundam model kits, uh, Bandai has done three Hulk's different... Hawk's going to kill us. Huh? Hawk's going to kill us. We're talking well, about his favorite topic. Well, they Bandai has done... Um, a bunch of um, figure kits. They've done them from Halo, they've done them from the DC superheroes, and that's what I'm going to focus on is the DC line. They did a set of skill level one kits, which features two different Batmans, uh, Superman from the New 52, and Joker. These kits are, I'd say about three to four inches tall, limited posability. Suggested retail on them is thirteen ninety nine. For the dealers, they come in cases of six, where you get two of each of the Batmans and one of each of the other two characters. Then they have two bigger kits that are about, I'd say, five, maybe six inches tall, which have more posability. 
and there's two different Batmans in those lines. One is Dark Knight, and the other one is Arkham City. And those have suggested retails of $28.99. Um, the, these also include a number of accessories with them. And then they have, have um, a bigger kit that I think is about eight inches tall. And this thing, and when I built it, it took me well over an hour, hour and a half to build because I think it says it has over a hundred pieces in this kit. It is super poseable. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, suggested retail on that is uh, it's closer to a hundred bucks. I think it's about seventy-five, eighty bucks. And the picture I already posted up on the Save Sci-Fi podcast. It shows, you know, Batman kneeling with his uh, right arm pulled back like he's ready to punch something. And that one actually has a cloth cape with it. It has a stand that you can mount um, and hit the back of his uh, uh, bat belt. And then you could turn around and put him in almost any pose you want. It When I say it is super poseable, comes with multiple uh, hands you can put in the it comes with multiple weapons um, these kits are molded in color so th there's very little to do there's a couple stickers uh, one of them has stickers for the eyes another one has a bat a bat shield that you have to put on and that's about it so even for the kids you know with some parental help putting it together they're nothing to build nice but nice. the yeah, they're very nice kits. And the other one, I figured being we're covering superheroes, I would make mention of Mobius Models in 2014 released three Superman and resin castings. They're not actually models, they're figures. They did two of the Man of Steel and one of Zod. And I've already provided links out to Mobius models where you can see what these things look like. And they've got some phenomenal detail on them. Nice, nice. And uh, Superman, there's two versions of him. One with the red and blue suit, and then one with the black suit, and then the Zod in his uh, Kryptonian armor. And those started about 150 bucks a piece. Sweet, sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's what I was. I, that's my report for this week from Perry County Hobbies. Nice, nice. So, anyway, I've actually got a little bit of a model report this week. Finally, the HMM Death Stinger has been released. The thing is spectacular, and there's two versions. You have got the standard version, which is just the the Imperial Death Stinger, which is how the size and scale it's meant to be in the battle cannon. And then there's the Hilts version, which actually comes with a mini Blade Liger, which puts it in scale for what it is in the anime. And the Hilts version also comes with chrome parts, and a slight recolouring looks spectacular. Seriously, look it up, it looks spectacular. I, I remember I'll post photos. But anyway, that's my model report, and that comes thanks to Hobby Link Japan, because that's where I get all my kits from. No, actually, no, it doesn't. It does come from Hobby Link Japan. I don't get my kits from there. I get them from the 105th Armory. Yeah, <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Tell no one that I screwed that one up. Sorry, it's live. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a $100 model kit put out on a Hobby Link Japan. I looked it up because I'd never heard of it. The Death Stinger? Yeah, it's... In, in Australia, it's like $400. So yeah, it's... it's Tad pricey, but it looks spectacular. <laughs> Everything's pricey over here. Yeah. The only thing that's not pricey over here is the sunlight, and that's because it kills you. Just walk outside and set yourself on fire. It's not that's that right. bad. Or the yeah, drop not, bears. Not here. Yeah, you can't trust the drop bears. Anyway. Next. News. 
Oh, yep, we have tons of news. I know, that's why you've got 30 minutes. <laughs> yep. uh, so first off, um, we'll start with some sad news. Um, for those who haven't been listening to our regular, who don't listen to our regular podcast, uh, about a, about a month ago now, um, at the end of, um, at, just at the end of, um, after Supernova ended, uh, there was a car crash involving two, uh, people from, um, Artist Alley. We, um, Supernova have finally, um, released, uh, the names of these two people and, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, and where they... It release their names and where they work. Yeah. Sort of what what what, Bruce what they Bates. were uh, at Sally. Um, they were um Rebecca. Um, I'm gonna use their full names. They put on the Facebook page. Uh, Rebecca and Chan Mezaros. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. And Jenny Sky Wu, and they were part of um X Seven. Yeah. They still um, actually have an online shop selling their stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh. uh Jenny's. Uh. Um, having a private um, ceremony, but Rebecca's family has um, has uh, been very nice and shared the uh, the funeral, which is tomorrow in Sydney. On they've made an event, which is on the Supernova Facebook page. So yeah. to all our Sydney viewers, uh, please go and support them. Yeah, exactly. And if, if you look if, at the original post, I've actually commented a link to their online shop that sells their artwork, so that you can support them. So. Yeah, if if we could, we we go down, plain and simple. Oh yeah, if if we could, we would. I'm going to be most of the way there by the end of today, but I can't make it to Sydney, unfortunately. So. Yeah. Now we move on to to some much brighter news, and we'll start with HawaiiCon. HawaiiCon. Now we haven't actually talked about HawaiiCon in a while. For those mm-hmm. who don't know, HawaiiCon is a convention that happens in Hawaii. It's run by G. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> who was one of the earliest supporters of the podcast. So if you go back and listen to like the first couple episodes, you'll actually hear an ad for HawaiiCon last year. Now, HawaiiCon normally happens around September, about the same time that Oz Comic Con Brisbane happens. So that's why I've never really had a chance to go over there because they're on an, almost the same weekend. They're literally yeah. a week apart. So it's really hard to do both. But GB is brilliant and HawaiiCon over there is spectacular. And... Who doesn't want an Iron Island holiday with a convention? <laughs> like, seriously, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we, we can't get there, otherwise we would be there. We should just send Michael. Send Michael, yeah. yeah. He wants, Michael does want to go, so. Anyway, um, so yeah, they I'll have... Go, I'll go for you. Yeah. That works. Uh, uh, I'll go, hey. give me tickets, I'll go. Yeah, that's it. As long as you cover all yeah. of your own costs, you can go wherever the hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you cover my cost, I'll be happy to go. Well, look at the amount of... Passport. I don't even have enough money to buy me a Death Stinger. And I want a Death Stinger. Yeah, I've got nothing. So, yeah, got nothing. Anyway, um... So, yeah, back to Hawaiicon, they have announced their first wave of guests for next year, which coincides with the uh, 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Nice. So... We have a whole bunch of Star Trek guests. <laughs> oh yeah. From the original se- from Star Trek Toss or the original series, we have oh, Rod Roddenberry, Nichelle Nichols, and Walter Koenig. We've met Nichelle and Walter, and they are lovely people. Oh yes, they're spectacular people. And Walter actually helped out with EJ on Nobility, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, Walter was uh, yes. So. He yes. was, um, he was Walter's Scotty. done quite a bit because he's been. Well, yeah, Walter's been in a lot of so, things. Well, Walter was not Scotty. No, no, no. I know Walter Jim, wasn't Scotty. Jim, I Jim. said, I said Walter is Scotty in EJ's one. I know uh, Walter. Walter was bloody Chekhov. He was on the. He was on the con. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, continuing with the Star Trek guests, we from the next generation we have Jonathan Frakes and Martina Sirtis. Woo! So yeah. and there's a whole like there's a whole uh, there's got some Battlestar Galactic uh Battlestar Galactica guests, uh Aaron Douglas and Tamo Pennicut, I think that's how you say her name. Yeah. Let's say the name. Uh, like from that. Babylon Five, Patricia Tolman. There's yeah. like a whole bunch of guests. Yeah. So I've I've been trying to convince Daniel from Supernova to get Patrick Stewart over for the fiftieth, but 
if that hap if that happened, that would. <laughs> oh, I know. If that if that happened, it'd be like. So it's, like, it's like, why are you lining up for Supernova? It's January. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I'm I'm already te I'm already tempted just to go to Sydney just to meet um Wonder Woman. Shit, yeah, that was that's pretty cool. That, that's a pretty huge announcement. I have the have the newest Wonder Woman. But yeah, go check out Hawaiicon and... Um... We'll wait and see if she sticks around. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a like on Facebook so you get all of their news as it comes. We, we share it on Safe Sci-Fi as well, so... But Facebook being Facebook doesn't show you everything we share because Facebook is fucking evil now. <laughs> yeah. But, seriously, what? we've got 29 likes on the podcast page as of this broadcast. But which I know isn't much to write home about, but whatever. If 18 people see a post, we're doing really well. And then Facebook starts telling me, wow, this post is really, really popular. It'd be great if all 29 people saw it instead of 18. Give us money and we'll show the rest of them. And it's like, yeah, you're not trying to blackmail the crap out of me. Extort me, are you? It's like, just, it's 20 people. 30 people. Which, why is that hard? <laughs> anyway. Okay. They do the same thing with the Perry County Hobbies Facebook page to me all the time. Yeah. But they, they want to charge almost as much to show 10 people as they want on Save Sci-Fi for us to show 200. It's like, why? Just, just you extortionate pricks. <laughs> they know that there's no other viable fucking place for people to go. So they know they can extort the crap out of everyone that's already there. But it reminds me, it seriously reminds me of the Mafia. It's a really nice shop you got there. Shame if no one got to see it. And it's like, just... Next. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let's get on to the crap ton of Star Wars news that we have. <laughs> oh yeah. We've been putting off Star Wars news because we've had a moratorium on Star Wars until Christmas. Now this episode won't actually be uploaded live on the net until about Christmas because of where I'm going has crap all internet connection. And I probably won't get it up before then, so we'll consider the moratorium past. Yeah. So, first big big news. How much did Star Wars make in its opening weekend? Uh about all of the money. <laughs> so just just in America alone. The opening weekend box office is at two hundred and forty-eight million dollars. Well, that then again wasn't pretty much every single cinema sold out. Yeah, yeah. There's no major. It was competition. the best-selling movie three months before it being released. Yeah, it, it smashed. Um, it smashed Jurassic World's two point eight million with a twenty percent increase. The worldwide opening uh, box office is at 529 million. Yeah. And people thought this wasn't going to do well. Yeah. I, to to all those people, I say, suck it. Well, it's funny. I've actually watched it twice since it aired. And we are going to do a proper full podcast with you all of it once we can get Michael and EJ and that on, because I know they've both seen it twice, so I won't really say too much more than that. I'll just sort of, yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll lay money down on it now saying it still won't get honored for anything other than sound or visual effects at the Emmys or Oscars or whatever the hell they they give for movies. Yeah. Which is really sad because Daisy really, really oh, yeah. steals the movie. Oh yeah, I won't disagree with that. So, anyway, so moving right along. Uh, moving right, uh, moving, where do we want to go from here? There's tons and tons of Star Wars news. Just start at the top. Uh, okay, he, he, uh, there's, like, so many, um, multiple people have reviewed it, even Kevin Smith reviewed stuff, The Force Awakens. Everyone, I haven't yet to seen a bad review yet. I have. I've seen a couple. I actually shared a post today, which, um, Oh, Actually that one reflects my current feelings on it after watching it a second time. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll grant there's nothing too new in it. No. It, it is pretty much it is a a, re, a rehash of episode four. Fair. 
But there are some pretty awesome moments in it that weren't in episode 4. Of course. Still. But yeah, um, it's also unfortunately leaked online. Yeah. God damn it. What was leaked online? Force Awakens. Oh, of course it's going to be leaked online. I know. Isn't it going to be leaked online? I know so... a guy who's watched it three times at least. Yeah. Admittedly, all of the ones online that... Um, are up there are all handheld. There's no good cop oh, copies yet. All cams, yeah. There's no sort of review copy yet. Mind you, any review or copy that is stupid enough to put it up online will instantly be annihilated by Disney. Yep. Uh, this is this is probably my this is a really funny um uh, Star Wars story. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson has shared his ob observations on Twitter of Force Awakens. Whoa! Oh, it's hilarious. Like he he, he no and I, I quote what he says on Twitter. Uh, he he notes that the film once again uses parsecs to measure time when they are in fact when they are in fact a unit of distance. That <laughs> I that, think was a joke. No, no, th this is a really funny joke. <laughs> and that store troopers run like they're carrying a full load of poop in their diapers. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, you uh, tried running in armor. I have, it's not fun. That, and that store trooper armor is just hilarious. I just love it how whenever there's a Star Wars related thing happening, just out of the woodwork, a million stormtroopers turn up. <laughs> You can hint that there's going to be a Star Wars thing somewhere. There's guaranteed to be at least one person in a Stormtrooper armor just turn oh, up. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, what the end... We are going to do some spoilers, sorry. Are you, Gene? Might want to stop listening. Go ahead. That's okay. Yeah. For those who don't want spoilers... Stop listening now. The, the spoiler moratorium is over, oh. so spoilers will be revealed. So... Spoiler warning, skip forward 20 minutes. Yeah. The ending <laughs> <laughs> the ending of Force Awakens. What does it mean for episode 8? Yeah. Is so the whole re cliff revelation. The whole everything, the whole Kylo Ren murder <laughs> killing yeah. his own father. Yeah. I'll, I'll try not to say who the father is. I'll keep I'll keep some... it's, it's it's said like a minute into the movie. Saying that he kills him at this point, and they're not saying who is sort of. Well, I, I, what I want to see is I want the I want to see the nuts of Ren brought into it. Yeah. We we get a glimpse, in um, in in that f in the flashbacks that Ray has when she first um holds the oh. grabs the lights um the yeah. Luke's Luke lightsaber. Now the question to for me is, who is Ray? Yeah, is she Luke's kid? Is she is she a completely new person like? That yeah. question is still out there. I think that she's related to Obi Wan. Oh. No one would see that coming. Everyone expects it to be related to Luke or Han or Leia. Everyone. So. The timeline wouldn't match up. And she's his grandkid. I don't that, think Ben. I don't think old Ben had got it on while I was on Tatooine. Hey, we know in Clone Wars that he well, hooked up with a couple of different people. <laughs> the, the main one being the the main person he hooked up with was the lady from, yeah, from that's the uh, from Man of Mandalore. That's yeah. that's her. Yep. Yeah. Her. her. Yeah. She was killed yeah. off. And. Right. She could have had a kid off screen that we don't know about. True. I still think she's Luke's kid. Nah. Yeah. Just, just, just for the pure fact that Star Wars is always focused on the Skywalker family. Nah. Yeah. And there's, it is, it is more than pure coincidence that she has that lightsaber. Exactly. But yeah, it's that 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 lightsaber is pretty funny though. It's like. Almost like Harry Potter's wand. It chooses its owner. Yeah. It's like, wait, back up, what? <laughs> Light, lightsabers can do what now? Yeah, it has a, has a mind of its own. So. Uh, this is an interesting story. Originally, um, back when uh, JJ was uh, casting everyone, Poe Dameron was actually meant to be killed off. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, 
the uh, the when the Tie Fighter crashes on Jakku, he's actually meant to have died, and when it got swallowed up. Yeah. Well, that explains how he miraculously survived for no apparent fucking reason. Yeah. It's like no explanation whatsoever. Hi, I am now on this planet. It's like, wait. I just got thrown out. What? I just got thrown out of the cockpit and found my way off planet. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right. The Red Imperial Star Destroyer blockade. Okay. And that five bucks says that would have been between. Um, when they were chasing Finn and stuff. No. Five bucks says that would have been between them announcing Episode 7 and them announcing Rogue One. And as soon as they announced Rogue One, and JJ went, but I'm killing this guy off, and they're like, no, you're not. And he's like, but, but, no. Okay. Well, supposedly, um, in the story, um, when he first read it, it was like, <laughs> um, JJ was like, you can have this character, but there's a catch. He, he dies. And it's like, Oscar was like, oh. And he actually took, like, a couple of days to think about it, and then he got back to it, and by then it was like, oh, by the way, I changed my mind, he's going to live. <laughs> so it was even before they announced Rogue One. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is another interesting story. Do Han and Leia know who Rey is? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Because... When when they come back up, um when they come back from the Starkiller base, Leia hugs Ray instead of Chewie. Yeah. So, do they know something we don't? Would that really surprise you? No. No, yeah, that's one of the reasons why people think that she's Kylo's twin. Because twins are more statistically likely to have twins. So. On the plus side, at least they didn't kiss. <laughs> well, we, uh, to be fair, that happened in the second movie, so who knows? It could happen. <laughs> I'm going to get killed for that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Um, the amount of cameos as well. Um, I don't know if you guys know how many cameos there actually were in Force Awakens. Every other well, side. From what I've seen, there was a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite one is uh, when Ray's doing the force persuasion on that Stormtrooper. Yeah. That Stormtrooper is Daniel Craig. <laughs> she for she Jedi mind tricked James freaking Bond. <laughs> uh, that's pretty but yeah, funny. But yeah, uh, a number um, of uh, voice actors from Clone Wars and Rebels were using uh, voiceover cameras for Stormtroopers. Yeah. Uh, and including uh, in the in the uh, once again in the flashback that Ray is having, there are voices that are saying her name. I didn't notice this at the time, but one of them was Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan. Yeah, I did hear he did a voiceover in Which that. Which is one of the reasons why I suspect Actually, he has something to do with it. And Al and Alec Guinness's voice in it as well. Yeah, they actually cut that out of um, one of his previous movies. And it just happened to fit perfectly, and that brought a tear to JJ's eyes. I was reading about that. Yeah, there's just so many cameos. I'm like, wow. Even um, Sam Witwer, um, who voices the Emperor in Rebels, had a, was a Stormtrooper voice. Nice. It's actually funny. He um, he actually did a live stream of Battlefront, and he was actually playing the Emperor. Was in doing the Emperor's voice while playing it. Nice. And he was like talking to people in the game. It was like, Stormtrooper, come to follow the Emperor. <laughs> and, the, and the people were like, Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, your Lord. <laughs> like, it was so funny. Stormtrooper. 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 Fuck you. Fuck you. Actually, <laughs> I watched that over the weekend. <laughs> oh, so funny. Robot Chicken. I hope, I hope Robot Chicken do something for Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. Anyway, what else you got? Uh,. The probably and this is this actually still surprises surprises me is that after watching Force Awakens, a lot more people are convinced that um, Supreme Leader Snoke is Darth Plagueis. So who just for those, for those who, don't, who don't know, Darth yeah. Plagueis was the master of Darth Sidious. Yeah, Darth Pla uh, Darth Plagueis the Wise, as they call him, as he is referred to in Episode Three was so strong in the Force and you had to keep people alive. That's brought up also in 
yeah, that's in episode three, and I think it's also mentioned somewhere in Clone Wars too. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they do a bit of stuff in that. Um, because there's a couple of um things there's a there's a mention actually. Um, that they I didn't pick this up. Um, uh, in Force Awakens, where Kylo Ren is like Supreme Leader Snoke is wise, and pe- and people jumped on that immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I still think he's he's secretly Gollum. <laughs> Just because he's Andy Circus. So I expect him to sort of lean down and go, "My precious," when he, as soon as he sees Darth Vader's lightsaber. Um, I, I I I really just hope it's an original villain. Like I don't want it to be Darth Vader. I just want it to be a complete um new, new bad guy. You you complete new Sith Lord. The question that... is, do you want him to be a hundred foot tall? <laughs> I'm not sure, because <laughs> I'll admit the first time I saw I in my in my mind I'm going, if he's actually that big, you're all fucked. <laughs> so... <laughs> but then when it's a hologram, I'm like, oh, uh. well, if he's still that big, you're all fucked. If not, well, the question <laughs> remains: is is he a hundred foot tall or yeah, three is he foot the, tall? Is he the size of Thanos? <laughs> yeah, is he Thanos big or is he Ant Man big? Because that would be hilarious. Like, all this build up to this big ultimate bad guy. They're about to go into a showdown with him. Say it's Ray and um, Finn and Kylo. Oh, oh, Ben. I'll go with Ben. Um, they're all sort of geared up and about ready to fight him. It's like, yeah, this is his throne room. I've never actually seen him in person. I've only seen him through hologram. They open the door and he makes Yoda look huge. Yeah. He's like ankle high. And he walks in and goes, I you with the snappers, I got you! <laughs> it's, like, it's like, that was anticlimactic. Yes. So, yeah, uh, this is cool. Um, uh, uh, Greg uh, Grunberg is in the movie. Is in Force Awakens. And his character is actually from the books. Ooh. Uh, so, Greg uh, uh, Grunberg's uh, character name is Snap we- um, Wexley. And, it is in his, and he's actually from the Aftermath novel. Okay. So yeah, uh, during uh, Aftermath, uh, uh, Wedge Antilles uh, um, teams up with a recently retired rebel fighter named Nora Wexley, and uh, in um, joining uh, Nora is her um, estranged uh, son Temin. Uh, uh, later confirm and um, the Star Wars official website later confirmed that Snap Wexley and Temin Wexley are the same person. It just changed his name. Okay. So nice to cool, ni- nice to cool, get a nice tie-in with um, the canon books. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. Yeah, and yeah. I know a lot of people don't like that uh, that all the old books are now not canon. But oh yeah, there's actually one of the friends that I've got at work. Um, her friend is. I'll admit I am sad because really? there's a lot of series I liked. A lot of people loved the th- the, um, the Grand Admiral Thrawn series. Yeah. Well, there's. Um, I've, I've she, heard she's always... a ridiculously hardcore fan. Is her friend, and she said there's only one person she knows that hates that movie, because according to her, it's not even close to what the true story is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, she's one of those. The, I hate. I, that's the problem I hate with fandoms. Yeah. Is the people that get so far attached that they that they think they know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they, they effectively, and lack of a better way of putting it, I genuinely, for the record, hate using the word in any context. But I have to say, they do get overly fundamentalist about it. And um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the Star Wars news. Oh, it took 15 minutes. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a Star Trek update. Yep. Um... Uh, Oh God! Star- well, no, Star Trek Axanar. Oh, good, okay. good, yes, good, good, good. We thought we were going to give us an update on Beyond Hope. <laughs> beyond, beyond saving, like it. Star Trek Axanar on their last Kickstarter, they've announced. They announced on the fifteenth that they are sixty days away from principal photography. Oh, nice. Mhm. So. They let their fans know that they'll be doing that at uh, very soon. Sweet, sweet. 
I know that um, the Red Shirt Diaries, which is a YouTube channel, which is hilarious. If you haven't seen Red Shirt Diaries, jump on YouTube, look it up. It's hilarious. What? Let's see how long we survive for. No, no, no. It's she, it's effectively she's just a generic crew member under Captain Kirk, having to put up with all of the shenanigans going on the ship, and all she wants to do is a day job and then come back to her room and relax. And you just get her logs. So it's just her doing a video log, and then halfway through, Captain Kirk will walk in with his shirt off, or torn, or something, and just start randomly hitting on her. And she's like, no, Captain, no, I can't do the, no. And then he'll, he'll disappear, and then bones will turn up and just start doing a medical scan on her. And he's like, what are you doing? It's like, Captain Kirk's been infected by the thing. And I'm just making sure you weren't infected by the thing. Like, we didn't even touch. That's what they all say, Ensign. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> Space AIDS. So yeah. Yeah, actually, I actually have a bit of Star Trek uh, news myself. Actually. Yep. Uh, uh, with Star Trek continues. Yay. So yeah, uh, they are f- currently uh doing ep- uh I think they're about to uh release episode six because they're releasing um set shots, and uh GG Ed- um Edgley has decided to d- uh, join the cast for episode six. Nice. So she's the first Australian uh, they've had on the show. Very nice. So that's pretty cool that what we're By getting. By any chance, is the is the ship she's in control of called the Dundee? <laughs> no, she's on the Enterprise. <laughs> it should be called the Dundee. <laughs> With dollary dues. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just Dundee one. We're coming in for attack vector. Oh, some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know what the line was. It's, it's in Iron Sky. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's wrong for every reason. Watch that crossfire, lads. Yeah. Actually, no, it should be generated too. Watch the crossfire, mate. You're going to get fucking shot out of the sky. Yeah. Language. Hey, we're Australian. Don't if we're care. not swearing, we're doing really, really well. <laughs> so, so we only we're said like, two bad not... words all, all, all podcast. Exactly. We're not like these prudish Americans who don't like to swear. Yeah. Um, moving on to some DC um, Arrow and Flash news. Yep. So we have two new characters going to be coming onto Flash. Yep. Um, uh, DC Comics character Eliza Harmon. Hmm. Um, she not related to um to anyone from S from SG One. Yeah. <laughs> Had to make the joke. Sorry. Wow. Um, she is a speed to nose tra- um, trajectory. Uh, she is only based in the New Fifty Two comics when Lex is, um, is experimenting on people to try and replace Superman after he vanished uh, following the events of um, Infinite Crisis. Yeah, but she dies shortly afterwards. Okay, but it's uh, the likely um, to bring her in is that she's going to be a volunteer when um, Earth Two Harrison starts testing his Velocity Nine serum later in the season. Yeah. Well, which I think that's how, which is I th- not in my book, so my DC book is fail. <laughs> which I think is how Wally's going to get his speed. Yeah, quite probably. And we have a new villain coming to it, uh, to uh, Flash as well. Um, actor Adam Sta- um, Stafford has been cast in the role of Adam Fells, also known as Geomancer. As what? Geomancer. Geomancer. Okay, I've got the book. Let me have a look. Um, I've got... Uh, there, there's Geoforce. There's no Geomancer. Well, uh, Geomancer is a metahuman that um, that can um, create earthquakes. Well, have that'll f- make running hard. Have fun with that, Barry. Yeah. Yeah. The only oh. one I've got, yeah, he's not an earthquake guy. He's a friend of Batman, so I'm pretty sure that's not the right person. Yeah, that's not him. <laughs> Stupid, useless books. But then again, when does Batman have friends? Yeah. True that. Yeah, uh, we did mention earlier that uh, Vixen is going to be um, joining the live-action Arrow. Yeah. So the act... Uh, I'm going to... The person who get... voice acted the, the character I'm gonna is going to be doing that. try and say her name, but I'm probably going to butcher this. When don't you? That's the, the only reason you're on the news guy is so that you butcher names and it's hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, uh... Megalon Echikun Roke? <laughs> <laughs> See? I told you that was going to be good. I'm pr- yeah. If you're listening, please just don't kill me. Your name is incredibly hard to say. Yeah, she probably gets that a lot. Just 
Just do what but I do. Yeah. Call everybody Bruce. She will. Uh, she will make the trip from Detroit to Star City in episode fifteen. Nice. Uh, which the um, episode is set to air on February twenty fourth, so we still have a bit of a wait. Aww. Yeah. Uh, there is. Um, there uh, they released a trailer for uh, the uh, the mid season premiere for when they come back from um, break. Yep. For Arrow, and it it's basically uh, just. It shows the grave again, and it also shows Oliver, um, like, following Felicity, um, into, like, an emergency ward, so they're still very really heavily hinting at it. Yeah. I still don't think it's Felicity. I still think it's the sun. I, if it, if, I think if, it's, uh, Detective Lance, or Detective yeah. Captain Lance. Well, we, we, we talked about this a couple of podcasts ago. I can't remember if you were there. It that was, was probably the, last week when I was sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think Michael was the one that came up with it, if I remember. Correctly. And it's actually really brilliant. Yeah, it's it's genius. Um, it if we look at the, the where the funeral's taking place, it's um, and if someone is dead from the Team Arrow or anyone related to Team Arrow, all of Team Arrow would be there, or at least the survivors of Team Arrow would be there, um, and Barry and the others would be there. Now, Barry and Oliver are the only two that know about his son. And his son is also in the same town as Barry. So, when, Oliver's lo- when Oliver asked Barry um, why he couldn't save him, it was because he was busy with Zoom. And that makes perfect sense. Without the others being there, it makes sense that it's the son. Because otherwise they would be. And Oliver is almost immediately became attached to that kid in a really creepy kind of way. Um, so to me, that makes perfect sense. That that it's does the sun. too. It's one of the things that all all the pieces fit. So, so yeah, that was that, that. That one comes from Michael. Hilariously, he was over to a good idea, and apparently he had one. So hmm. yeah. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, uh, there, um, really, I don't, I don't think there's too much else, because I've really said everything's on break, yeah. so. Yeah, oh, no, this, actually, no, this oh, is a major. don't forget, don't forget, Doctor Who and Sherlock Holmes are, sorry, Sherlock. Oh, are Christmas specials. Both having Christmas specials. So make sure you keep an eye out for them, we're definitely going to be covering them after the Christmas special air, so that'll be... Ooh, I'm going to have to try and find the Sherlock one, that's going to be hard, I don't know if they're going to show that on TV over here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I, it'll be on Netflix. Just uh, just a, a major uh, a major thing for um, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, uh, Matt Nabel is going to return for Ra's al Ghul. Ooh, nice. So clearly Ra- Rahas isn't dead. Well, Raz is dead, they're going through time, so we'll probably go backwards in time before he died. Probably. Yeah. So, anyway. And, um, Damien Dark's also gonna appear on it as well. Nice. I'd love to see him do, like, a cross- like, have them both in the same episode, just to see him go at it. Yeah. Yeah, well, considering, um... I like it how even... What's his name? Malcolm isn't game enough to throw... <laughs> even he's like, ah, uh, nope. Yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna leave Damien Dark alone, because... Damien Dark is Damien Dark. Actually, what is his superhero name? Or is it just Damien Dark? No, it is. It, it, it's actually Damien Dark. Yep, this book, you have failed me again. Yeah, no, it, it is Damien Dark, and he's the head of Hive. That's actually in the comics trick. Okay, let's see. Well, neither of those things are in my book. DC Comics, the ultimate character guide. You have, you failed, have failed me this city. for the last time. You have failed this podcast. So, anyway. Anyway, that's it for tonight's podcast. We sort of struggled at the beginning, but we sort of came good by the end. Um, I think it's too so much Star Wars news. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Star Wars. Anyway, uh, as always, keep it on facebook.com slash save sci-fi. We are currently building a new webpage for save sci-fi.com, so keep an eye on that. Garrison 7 has got their new webpage will be up soon, and there's going to be something really cool on there to keep an eye out for. Um, I, that, so I think that's about it. Anyone else got any sort of shout outs? Um, the 105th nope. Armory. Check out the 105th Armory for your models if you're in Australia or Perry County Hobbies if you're in Hot. America. 
So, anyway, have fun. Catch it. Bye. And Merry Christmas and stay safe. Merry Christmas, everybody. May the force be with all of you. <laughs>